Hey, welcome back to Ask Allison. Here's today's question. At my current pace of inquiries and booked first appointments, I'll be full in two weeks. I don't know what to do with the clients that will call the following week and the week after that. I'm not good at estimating how long my clients will be in therapy, so I don't know how to manage a wait list ethically. What works best? Great question. First, I want to thank Therapy Notes for sponsoring Ask Allison. They are the number one rated electronic health record system available today with live telephone support seven days a week. It's clear why Therapy Notes is rated 4.9 out of five stars on Trustpilot and has a five-star rating on Google. Therapy Notes makes billing, scheduling, note-taking, and telehealth incredibly easy, and they also offer e-prescribe. If you're coming from another EHR, Therapy Notes makes that transition incredibly easy, importing your demographic data free of charge so you can get going right away. Find out what more than 100,000 mental health professionals already know. Use promo code ABUNDANT at therapynotes.com for two free months. All right, so for many of you, we're going to travel into the future. Yay! We're focusing on when your practice is full to bursting. Now, before you say I'm putting the cart before the horse, consider that this will actually do some like early practice mindset shifting. So come with me here, even if you only have one client. Let's talk a bit about wait lists, shall we? It is a pretty exciting thing to be full if you're like me. And when I first got full, at first you try to cram new clients into spaces without realizing that it displaces current clients. Maybe you loosen your boundaries and you work an hour late to make up for that, or you schedule someone in during your lunch hour. And at some point you realize you can't keep taking more clients on. It's a very tempting thing to have a wait list, it soothes those scarcity feel, fears and it feels like the promise of ongoing success. But I wanna take a minute to really look at it. I'm gonna use an extreme but real example. I worked for an agency that often had three to six month waiting lists. We were told to manage our caseloads by our supervisors and it just pisses me off to even say that out loud because I heard it all the time. And it felt like there was this line of people banging on the door and it was my job to get the current clients out the door before they were really done with therapy. I would wake up in the middle of the night feeling anxious about the waiting list as if I were somehow personally responsible, probably because I tend to work with folks with longer term issues for whom solutions focused therapy isn't appropriate, probably because I really love doing intense life changing work with people and I never figured out how to do it that quickly. And probably because I felt pressured every single day to manage my caseload. Um, and then guess what happened when people were finally called for their turn after three to six months? Sometimes they muddled through the misery on their own enough to make life just good enough that they didn't feel like they needed therapy. Sometimes they had decompensated so much that they needed a higher level of care than we provided. I still remember this look on this man's face. He finally got in and he said, you made me wait five months to tell me that I need rehab. What the F is wrong with this place? Um, so here's my point. In most cases, waiting lists aren't good for clients. If there is another clinician who has availability and is capable of helping your client, I think it's more ethical to refer them. If you are the only therapist within a 60 mile radius who knows how to treat what you treat, then maybe consider a waiting list, but that's probably not the case for most of us. Why should a client wait weeks or months? Because you're stuck in scarcity. So here's a valid concern. If word gets out that you're full, people may stop referring to you. And I have a couple workarounds for that. If people are referring to you because you have expertise in a particular niche, tell them that though you're full, you're happy to talk to the client and refer them to other great people you know in your niche. And if you have this internal matchmaker that's really satisfied, then you can leave your friends' love lives alone and help matchmake a therapy client with a good therapist for them. Yes, this means you're going to be devoting time every week to talking to people who are not going to become your clients and referring them to other people's practices. And if this works for you and you have the time for it and it feels good, it's a great way to help people. You're spreading goodwill. You're helping multiple people in need. And um, it will certainly be beneficial to both your reputation and your karma. Um, you're living in abundance. You're trusting that all the good work you do will keep you full. If you do not have the time or the inclination, um, to do this, if you can't call people back within a reasonable amount of time, or you just can't manage all those calls, you can also create a secret page on your website that you send to people. And I call it secret because it's not gonna be on your menus. It's just gonna be your URL slash referrals. And you can list on this webpage just by presenting concern, the people that you trust in their websites. And you can have a cut and paste reply with this URL to every client that emails you. Um, it makes for a quicker callback conversation. 
if you are calling them back and you just leave it on their voicemail, like your URL slash referral has the people that I really trust. Um, each time somebody graduated from therapy or moved away, I always got a call within a week to fill that spot. Uh, as you'll find, if you are marketing and you are doing it right, it's making it easy for people to find you and easy for people to call you. There are plenty of clients. It's going to keep flowing. So it's just scarcity making you feel like you need to hold on to these people so you don't lose them. Unless, like I said, you're the only one who can treat them. And I said within a 60 mile radius, that's if they're really, really wanting in person. If you're in the state, I'm sure you're not the only person in your state. I promise you. So today's free worksheet is how to handle calls when you're full. You can comment or DM the word sheets as in worksheets on social media, and I'll send you access to this and all of our other worksheets, um, or you can find them on our website if you are listening to the pod. All right, y'all have a great day.